It was a much better performance for the men at Twickenham this week, though, wasn't it, Goody? Yeah, it was. Um, and it's not me coming on here now saying, oh, we're back. We're, you know, we're one of the best teams out there. We, we are. We're not. Eddie, your hero. No, you're not. Um, the big difference is for me, defensively, and I talked about Scotland earlier, how physical they were coming hard and straight off the line against New Zealand. Let's be honest. Japan will shock him. I wanna, I'm going to say it. I'm going to be honest with it. I, it. They were poor. Errors. Unforced errors. You know, I'm expecting Japan to come there and I'm hosting before the match a Q&A with Nick Easter and I'm like, you know, the sun's out. Japan likes to chuck the ball around. They're a decent outfit in that sense. It might put England under pressure, but England's defensive intent, um, their physicality, getting off the, the line, double efforts uh, across the board, the width in defence that we had. You know, I spoke last week about how tight we were for Argentina's try off the line out. Um, they learnt a lot in the week and the biggest gains were in defence and that's coming up against the All Blacks this week. That's what you've got to be tipped up at, at, at on your game. There were some decent work-ons in attack. People talk about the Smith Farallaxis growing and it did grow. Um, a lot of that is off the front football that we were getting in the, you know, it, in defence, how much we were winning that game line. So, you know, you were getting turnovers and being on the front foot. Um, but positive signs without jumping from the rooftop saying we're, we're great again. Um, huge, huge effort in defence. Um, our set piece was always going to be good. You know, obviously, Genj and Sinclair dominated at scrum time. And you know, you've got to play to your strengths. If that is a huge strength of ours, get the penalties, take the territory. But you still want to see a bit more cohesion in attack, even though we scored, I think it was seven tries in the end. There were some good parts of it. But acid test over the next two weeks now, isn't it? Yeah, that's the thing with this game. Good, Like you said, Japan, I thought they were going to offer so much more. Yeah. And they didn't. Freddie Stewart, star man, everyone's talking about him. It was good to see him get a bit of space, wasn't it, really? Because yeah. everyone talks about him kicking the ball and retrieving his aerial skills, which for me is one of the best players, if not the best player in the world. Yeah. But everyone's talking about him. Eddie Jones doesn't like his moustache. He was burying it, but I think he's grown it from November. <laughs> Make him feel yeah. bad. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like the energy that Jack Van Portfleet bought as well in attack. Um, you know, there was a marked difference in terms of our energy. And it's amazing, isn't it? You, game one of the Autumn Internationals, you look lethargic, you look tired, you look as if you trained too hard. And then week two, when you get a bit of a rocket because you've lost to Argentina, you perform in the way you did. Let's hope they can back it up now against New Zealand because... As I said, bigger tests to come. We've got the wood over New Zealand and Eddie Jones has thrown down the gauntlet already, hasn't he, around. We're going to go after them. Um, let's see how it comes out because I was a bit down and there's a bit of doom and gloom around England rugby last week because we lost to Argentina. We've just put 50 points on Japan, who nearly beat the All Blacks a few weeks ago, beat Scotland in the World Cup. They beat Ireland in the World Cup. We're basically, we're the best team in the world again, lads. Come on. One of the arguments could be, I don't know, and I feel bad saying this because I know we're, we're all for growing the game and giving other teams op, um, opportunities. I'm not saying that Japan are a tier two team, they, although they did play like that at the weekend. And it's great to see Fiji getting the opportunities. But with how congested the calendar is, wouldn't it just be great to see, I don't know, like, I don't want to say bigger games. Like, how do you say it with all due respect? Like, yeah, bigger games. England All Blacks, England South Africa, England Australia. We've got the Six Nations and see these games in the in, in the summer against the Japan and against the Fiji. But that's all. That sounds bad on them. I've got two hat on. I've got two hats on here. One backwards, one facing forward. Um, yeah, I, it just felt like a bit of a pointless game, and I feel shit saying that. Why are you being horrible, Jim? I oh, know. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. I'm sorry. How similar do you think the approach will be for the All Blacks this weekend, Goody? Um, well, I think they'll go back to their gun 15 I think Brody Retallick comes back in after his ban for the red card he got against Japan uh, Aaron Smith comes back to 9 Moonga will come back at 10 and probably Bowden Barrett will shift to full back um, uh, they'll look for a performance like they had against Wales um, where they're physical they would you know Wayne Pivak said it didn't he, he said they got out muscled and bullied at times by the All Blacks and then actually I'm expecting them to do that to Scotland as probably Jim was on his social media where he's like the sun's out you know, it looked good for the All Blacks, but my God, Scotland barred up in defence and, and physically, especially at set piece as well. So do I think they'll change much? Yeah, there'll be personnel changes. Um, Cody Taylor probably played himself into starting, although Takiaho is something special. Whoever they pick there is a decent player. Um, you know, Ardi Saver is going to be hard as you like again, uh, as is Papaliti. Who they go at six? Do they go back to Frizzell? Do they go to Barrett at six, which is what they did in the World Cup? 
where we absolutely smashed them in that semi-final. So I, think, I don't think they'll be doing that then. No, I think England will live off. Um, you know, the last few times we've played them, obviously the World Cup semi-final, that's going to be a mental block, I think, for New Zealand. When they came to Twickenham in 2018, I think it was, we should have beaten them then as well if it wasn't for a slight offside or something like that. But the big question marks are over New Zealand. Um, you know, I think everyone would expect England to front up, but you play New Zealand who you haven't played for a long time. Everyone thinks New Zealand's the best team in the world. This is England's opportunity to put 50 on New Zealand. You heard it here first, <laughs> lads. 50's coming for you. <laughs> Will there be much change for England? Uh, the big question around Eddie Jones now is, when you look at the selection, and we're going to chat to him in a minute, he's not going to tell us who's starting at nine, but the energy that Jack Van Portfleet has brought into this England team, you saw Freddie Stewart, Jim said it then, how good was he? These youngsters that he's backed some of them, but not all of them, you've got to give them their time now. So pick Jack Van Portfleet against the All Blacks. Don't revert back to type and go... You know, for some of your old war horses, um, you know, there's this issue around who's going to play six. He likes a big, tall six. I'd be saying against the All Blacks, let's play Sam Simmons at six or a Jack Willis at six, and let's play Billy Vanapola at eight. You know, let's have some speed. You got to, you got to beat them with ball in hand. Defensively, yes, you've got to fly off the line. Ben and Earl them under pressure. Ben Earl, yeah, there you go. Ben Earl's not in the squad, but I mean, he ripped it up for Saracens at the weekend. He's ripped it up all season, but Eddie Jones won't pick him. Cheers, Eddie. Um, you need someone explosive like that in your back row alongside, you know, the number eight, whoever he's going with. I thought Simmons added pace at eight at the weekend. They're not monster carries, but they're they're dense that are, you know, bringing fast ball, the, the rock speed after he carries because he's taking yard after yard. You know, you're not seeing the big flare breaks that some number eights make, but it gets you over the game line. So we've got to play with momentum. You want to shift your attack. You need more presence with ball carriers. And you need more explosive ball carriers. So I'd be tempted to look at Billy and Simmons in the back row. Um, but knowing Eddie Jones, he'll go Marrow at six again because he likes that big, tall, rangy six. But then again, I said earlier, you've got to pay to your strengths. And our strengths are set piece at the minute, um, which means Marrow's in the team wherever, whether he's in the second row. He's the best second row in the world for me in terms of his nuts and bolts of the game. So play him there and let's find and get more out of a, a six ball in hand as well, which might take our attack to... A new level. Yeah, I agree with Goody. I think Eddie Jones does like that tall, rangy six. He'd probably go for Courtney Laws. We know that Courtney's struggling a little bit with his head, which is unfortunate. Hopefully, he comes back soon. Uh, but I think he'll stick with Marrow at six. Johnny Hill is a good player. I like him. I think he's improved loads since he's been at Sale for a short period. And I like David Ribbons as well. I'd like to see him get another shot. So uh, that's what I think they'll do. I'd love to see Ben L. I, I love Ben L. At a seven, but anyway, I ain't picking the team. England scrum half Jack Van Portfleet joins us. How are you, mate? Very good, thank you. How are you? Jack, you've come a long way, mate, since I saw you in the academy. It could have been four years ago. Let's just say it was eight years ago. You're about 12, 13. <laughs> and watching yourself, Freddie Stewart back then, George Martin was in the mix amongst a, a, a few others that are going to come through as well. But my goodness me, your career has just been on the, the upward trajectory. Like, how are you finding it? And what's it like as a young man being in this situation where you're out there playing test match footy, as the cool kids like to call it? Yeah, no, I'm loving it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you probably, yeah, wouldn't have recognised me back when I was then. I was very small and I wasn't actually very good at all, to be honest. <laughs> um, oh, you were, Jack. You were you were one of the good <laughs> ones that stood out. Actually, I don't want to say I told uh, Brett Deacon and Dusty Hare that you were the one coming through, but effectively I told them, so you're welcome. <laughs> No, I'm loving life. Thank you. Um, it's it's been awesome in camp, and um, yeah, like you say, to to come up through with a lot of those or a few of those academy boys that I played with is is uh, yeah, it's been pretty cool. It's a phenomenal rise, though, isn't it, mate? And I know we've had a bit of back to forth with my role at Leicester, and obviously uh, a few messages over Instagram, all this stuff. So you break into the first team, you win the prem last year as part of that squad. You go on the England tour to Australia, you have a massive impact there. And then you head out to Ibiza and then it started again this season. So um, it, was it the trip to Ibiza that's got the season going so well? And um, <laughs> any stories with you and Freddie Stewart from that trip? Uh, probably none for none for, none for a podcast. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, that was a good trip. Um, I definitely needed to do uh, plenty of recovery and training post-trip. But um, no, it was good. Yeah, it's sort of been, um, yeah, it's been a nuts, or a bit crazy few sort of year or so um I've actually loved it I was just sort of like 
Oz came as a probably a little bit of a surprise over summer and I just tried to sort of make the most of it when I had that opportunity and um, yeah try and once you had a taste for it you don't really want to lose it or um, you want to keep enjoying it so um, yeah that was it was a big motivation coming into this season and um, yeah I'm just loving being loving being involved. Yeah, you must have to punch yourself as well. Like you go from the point, we just mentioned the academy there, but growing up in Norfolk and having poster pictures of Ben Yuggs on your ceiling and stuff like that. And the next thing you're with him in camp, do you know what I mean? Like it must be really weird in terms of players that you've watched growing up and playing with Freddie Stewart and stuff like that, a good mate of yours. Yeah. Um, just reference the Ben Youngs. Did you have a poster on your wall or your ceiling or is that just a banter? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, maybe, maybe not. I'm not really sure, but... I say yes. We'll take that as a yes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty nuts. I mean, it's it's a bit of a weird one with like with the Youngs brothers, obviously, because I live, I grew up on a farm in Norfolk with my family's farmers back in Norfolk, and we are we farm the other side of Elsham to the Youngs brothers. So some of the some of the land we farm crosses over. So if I ever did a bit of work, I used to see Tom probably out on the farm doing more work than than Ben. But um, I um, so I sort of and. I've sort of known them growing up um, sort of distantly and stuff. So it makes it quite special to be able to play with them. And obviously you don't, uh, we don't have loads. Everyone sort of knows everyone a bit in Norfolk. So when you hear about him coming through and his story, um, it meant, yeah, a lot. And him and Tom, it was a lot of boys uh, inspiration growing up um, to follow, follow them and, and, and their path. So um, yeah. So to be able to play with them both was, um, yeah, extremely special. So this could be a 50-year rivalry, couldn't it, Jack? Like, basically, when bon Ben and Tom played for England, you stole the land off them. When Tom's now <laughs> retired, well, you're not going to steal it back now because Tom's actually there. I wouldn't steal anything off him. But the change the change of guard, as it were. But that's quite a cool story, isn't it? That your farm's backed. Who's got the better farm? Oh, well, I don't know. I mean... <laughs> Um, we're pretty proud of our one. We're pretty, we're Again, pretty proud of ours. I'd say, I mean, dad's dad's in charge of it. I'd say, say it's more da his dad's farm. His dad's farm. I know Tom's working hard. I keep seeing him over. Saw him a bit over summer. Um, yeah, he's busy on the combine. So um, yeah, um, I don't know. He's he's got he's got a new bit of land now, so he's pretty buzzing. So um, yeah, he's growing. That's for sure. Nice. Humbly, you're saying it's yours. But what was interesting to me, you said there was a bit of crossover. There's a, there's a fair bit of crossover in Norfolk, isn't there? You, any <laughs> relations or not so much? No, no, no. No relations, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, how's it been? Obviously, you know, let's talk about your relationship with Ben because I know coming through uh, the Leicester Academy and everything like that, you look up to him. It, it, and I saw the embrace after the game on Saturday between you and him. Um, and it's obviously, there's a, a rivalry there clearly because you're both vying to be England's number one scrum half, but also you get on exceptionally well as well, don't you? And he's been some mentor. I don't, there's clearly no better bloke to learn off, is there? No, definitely. Um, no, me and me and Lenny have got a, a really good relationship. He's He's been amazing for me. Um, and he's he's been so sort of, so good at helping me. And um, obviously he was brilliant over the summer when he wasn't in Oz, just helping me out from afar, saying, uh, giving me just some advice and things going in and then working with him uh, obviously at club for the last three or four years, but then um, to to work with him in an England in an England squad as well has been unbelievable. He's um, yeah, he's brilliant, and um, yeah, I think I don't know if the uh, if the Norfolk connection or the the old farming background makes it sort of closer or an appreciation, but um, no, we've got a, we've got a great relationship, and um, it's it's brilliant and uh, awesome to work with. What about your relationship with Eddie Jones? And we ask that to all the players that come on. It's kind of the obvious taglines that we're looking for. But it seems like you've got a job to do when you came off the bench last week against Argentina. You did it in your first touch. It kind of felt inevitable that you were going to start against Japan. Does he just let you go out there and play your own game? Or is it quite kind of razor sharp on what he wants from you? No, Eddie's, Eddie's been brilliant with me. I think um, when, he, when we went to Oz, um, I sort of first... Uh, experience with him he said look you you you've been picked to play um you you've been picked to play and you've got your chart you've got your opportunity and we had about a week's prep building up to it you've got your opportunity of with that week of training to put your hand up and go for it and so he gave me that confidence that I was um to go after it and really rip in and he's been the same coming in this this campaign he's just he, he really 
sort of uh, makes me back myself and um, sort of encourages me to 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 be myself basically and and not um, and but within our framework of how we want to play and things. But yeah, he's been brilliant at letting me be myself and um, yeah, trusting trusting uh, my instincts or the things that he said will get you got got you to in the squad. So um, you know he's been fantastic and I'm I'm loving working with him. Tell me now, obviously, we know the story. Ben Youngs came on here and told us about the packet of sweets that Eddie Jones put in front of him when they first met a few years back. Was there any quips from Eddie Jones to you? Uh, anything on the name? Because he likes his his little nuances, doesn't he, around different players? Yeah, no, uh, n- nothing nothing like that. I mean, I was I was pretty prepped for a nickname or something with the, with the name or stuff, but no, he's, he's stuck to JBP. So, um... How cool is it to have just your initials as your nickname? Like Big Jim, Goody, <laughs> you've got loads of other shit nicknames as well, but JVP, I mean, any other nicknames floating around the squad from the boys to you, or is it literally just initials only and you're that big time, that's all you need? No, I mean, JVP is the, the main one. Most boys call me that. I mean, I did get the nickname Judas at the club, uh, which was, I don't like saying mm. it actually, uh, really. <laughs> but it sort of came from... It originally came from throwing a bad pass to someone in training and they got absolutely melted like above their head like Thomas. And then we did a fitness drill and I didn't get my foot over the line and Colsey, uh, Coley didn't didn't like that at all. So uh, Judas Van Portfleet, they seem to like the ring of it. And um, if ever I do anything, anything I, if I ever do anything along that sort of, along the name Judas, then I get, yeah, it always comes or resurfaces. So uh... All Blacks at the weekend, mate. All eyes on that. I know we're kind of speeding past the game at the weekend. It was a comfortable victory in the end. Every player's dream is to play against the All Blacks and face the hacker. Is that up there for you? Is it on the bucket list now you're in that environment? Uh, no, definitely. Definitely. They're always the games you um, watch as a kid and the, the wins over New Zealand will always stick in your memory. Um, the ones growing up, that, that, that one in 2012... Um, you can you won't sort of forget that things like those sort of games you always uh, remember watching and have been probably a big inspiration for me to, to if I ever get the opportunity to to really um, enjoy it and and to sort of yeah pinch yourself a little bit because they are like you say the the big games that you want to be a part of so hopefully if selected then I get to experience it but um, no it's it's every player's dream and um, yeah, we want to make it. Oh, if we, hopefully, if I get pitched to make it a dream that um, a, a sort of a, a winning, a winning result. But um, yeah, no, it'll be a incredible occasion if I get the opportunity. If picked, if let's just say if for now, how do you face the hacker? Is there a thing do you have in your mind how that's going to unfold? I mean, I'm not too sure who they'll pick at scrum half this week. Aaron Smith likely. Perinara played well when he came on at the weekend. You've got the red Finley Christie. We just eyeball the life out of them, or what? Or I don't really know. I mean, normally, like when I when I've sung the anthem or stuff, I like to sort of sort of smile and like appreciate it, and sort of it's sort of like a been a decent coping mechanism for me with like um, playing at Twickenham or playing in front of crowds to like smile and um, sort of lick your lips at that sort of feeling of yeah, you've you this this is what you've always wanted to do. So. I don't know if I'll smile at it, but I feel like if I smile at it, that probably won't go down too well or something. There's the old uh, <laughs> Farrell smirk, which is good, but I don't think, I, I don't know if I'll quite be able to pull that off like he did. So um, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do, to be honest, but um, yeah, I'll definitely try and enjoy it. And um, yeah, um, take on the confrontation anyway. Fast smile before the semi final, uh, and we ended up winning it, so you can smile all you like, mate, I reckon. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what we do. Jack, obviously, let's rewind the clock to the game against Japan on uh, Saturday. It was your first start at Twickenham in an England jersey. And you mentioned it then about the anthems and having a little smile. Just talk us through the emotions because we talked about your rise earlier. You're 21 years old. You're absolutely flying. Um, you know, you've obviously got some great competition within the Leicester squad and the England squad. But to get the nine jersey in at Twickenham, uh, be able to run out there at the, you know, the home of rugby and um, sing the anthem and all that stuff. What did it mean to you and, and the family? Oh no, it meant it meant so much. It was it was extremely special to over the last two weeks to play at Twickenham, a ground you always dream about playing on. Um, and I mean, yeah, for me and my family growing up, um, sort of proud English family, even though the the surname doesn't suggest it. But um, 
no, for me, it means so much into the family just to to make them proud and to do it. Last week, I had, um, well, I had both grandparents there and 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 grandparents there this week. So it was, yeah, no, extremely precious, uh, extremely extremely special. Sorry, and um, yeah, uh, it's hard hard to put into words really uh, what it means, but um, yeah, it's definitely something I want to try and keep on doing. That's for sure. I mean, that whole day must be pretty intense leading up to it. The bus ride to Twickenham. The whole experience must be quite overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And I think it's something that the the boys like made sure to sort of let you know to to take it in and stuff. Um, I'm not always one for like headphones and stuff. Um, I sort of listened to a bit of music before the game, but I made sure that when I was getting close to Twickers and sort of headphones out, look out the window, see everyone, um, and make sure you actually take it in and um, enjoy the experience and. And make sure you, yeah, um, and take it in like I, like I said. So um, that's something I'll be doing, uh, or I have been doing, and I've absolutely loved. Let's quickly chat All Blacks then this weekend. Hopefully, you know, you're definitely involved starting or on the bench. But um, coming up against Aaron Smith, did you watch the game yesterday against Scotland? What are you expecting? Because it's, uh, it's really exciting now, isn't it? There's a, a market shift in how we played from week one to week two. And then the big two coming up now with the All Blacks and then South Africa. Um, what are you expecting from the All Blacks this week? Yeah, um, obviously, Aaron Smith played incredibly well um, in that first game against Wales. Uh, we all, a fair few of us watched the game yesterday. Um, no, we're expecting a, a really good challenge. Uh, obviously, you know, you know, the, the All Blacks have got their reputation for a reason because they've been the best team in the world for for many many years. So, no, we're expecting expecting a really tough challenge, and um, but for us. Um, we've got seven days prep this week to really push as far as we can in, in improvement um, from the weekend because we still know we've got plenty to improve on um, but we'll have a big focus on us and how we can take the game to them and not um, not be surprised with what they bring or, or be a passenger we want to we want to really front foot it and take the game to them so um, it's a really exciting challenge pod 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 rugby pod <laughs>